Converting fractions to decimals definitely has its perks to it. For example, it makes comparing numbers a lot easier, but also you deal with decimals all the time when it comes to money, weight, as well as length, any type of measurement, right? So that's kind of a couple reasons why maybe this is useful for the real world, right? So how about we hop right into the video of how to convert fractions to decimals. For the first question, we have seven tenths as a fraction. And the very first thing that you wanna do is we are going to divide the numerator by the denominator. So the seven is going to be your dividend, which I'm just gonna give you that terminology now in case you ever hear that you know, in your classes. Dividend is the inside number on a division problem. And the 10 or the denominator is going to be your divisor or the number on the outside. So for seven tenths, we're gonna do seven, divided by 10, seven being your dividend and 10 being your divisor. And dividing this is eventually going to get us to our decimal, right? So how many times does 10 fit into the number seven? Well, you can't fit a larger number into a smaller number. That doesn't make any sense, right? Now, one of the biggest things that people get confused on is, well, what do I do if I don't have any more numbers after the seven? Well, I want you to realize that seven and 7.0, so if I write it down here, seven, and 7.0 are legitimately the same exact number. We just don't write 0, 0.0 because there isn't a point to it, not to make a pun in that sentence. But these are the same exact thing, right? So to extend this problem out, all I'm going to do is write 7.0 after it because technically that is behind the seven all the time. We just don't really realize it because we just write seven 24 seven. Right? So how many times does 10 go into seven? Well, it doesn't, so I'm gonna write a zero here. And then this decimal point is gonna be brought up into my final answer, which is also known as the quotient, right? And now we can go ahead and figure out, well, how many times does 10 go into 70? Well, 10 fits into 70 perfectly seven times. So 10 times seven is 70. We go ahead and subtract here, 70 minus 70 is zero. And our final answer is seven tenths, which is known as a terminating. I'll write that out just in case you want some more terminology. Terminating, which means the decimal stops, right? It doesn't go any further than seven, right? As soon as you run out of numbers, terminating decimal right off the bat. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into number two. I'm just gonna erase this because I'm gonna write all over the place. So don't expect me to write in the place where the question is, right? For two ninths, again, Two is our dividend, nine is our divisor. So I'm just gonna write it over here. So two on the inside, dividend. Nine on the outside, divisor. How many times does nine fit into the number two? Well, again, it doesn't. So remember, you can extend this two out to say 2.0. Nine doesn't fit into two, let's put a zero there. And then bring that decimal point up into our quotient. And then how many times does nine go into the number 20? Well, it fits twice. 9 times 2 is 18. If we go ahead and subtract, 20 minus 18 is 2. Well, how many times does 9 go into the number 2? It doesn't, so that's where we annex a 0 and add it to the very end because 2, 2.0, 2.00, you could add as many zeros as you want and it's still going to be the number 2, which is why we can just keep annexing zeros literally forever and ever if we want it to. So let's bring that 0 down. How many times does nine fit into the number 20, which we literally just answered this question. It's still two. Nine times two is 18. We subtract, we get a remainder of two. You add another zero, you bring it down, but then you're gonna notice there's a pattern of twos repeating forever and ever and ever. So this is known as a repeating decimal. You could literally keep dividing forever, which I actually made uh, students do this for bonus if they wanted to, if they wrote down the division problem and showed 100 digits repeating over and over again, just for humor. But believe it or not, we actually had a few students do that last year, which I don't know how they spend their free time, but that scares me a little bit. All right, so our final answer is going to be 0 0.2 repeating. And if you're not sure how to write that, you are going to put 0 0.2. And instead of writing twos forever, all you want to do is put a bar notation over the two, signifying that that two is just repeating over and over and over again. So don't write out like 15 twos and then put a dot, dot, dot at the end. Just put bar notation and that signifies that this is a repeating decimal. And I'll just write that down there in case you're jotting it in a notebook or something, taking notes. Okay, so that is a repeating decimal. Right now, let's go ahead and move on over to number three. 
we have five, six. Again, let's go ahead and do some division over here. And then I'm just gonna write it literally in the same exact spot because I don't want it to run into my webcam. So we have five on the inside, that is your dividend. And then we have six on the outside or your divisor. Well, six doesn't go into five. So once again, let's go ahead and make that a 5.0, which is still five. Six goes into five, zero times still. Move the decimal point up in your final answer or your quotient. And then how many times does six go into 50? Well, that fits eight times. So six times eight is 48. We go ahead and subtract here. 50 minus 48 is two. How many times does six go into two? Well, it doesn't. Let's annex a zero and bring that down. Six goes into 20. How many times? That's gonna be three. Six times three is 18. And we get a remainder of two. How many times does six go into two? It doesn't, we'll annex a zero, right? I'll just move it over here to the side a little bit, bring that down and we get 20 here. And again, you're going to notice that it's gonna keep repeating itself. Six goes into 20 three times, six times three is 18. We subtract, we get a remainder of two, right? So I'm not gonna keep writing this unless you're my student that wants bonus and has nothing better to do once again. So for our repeating decimal in this case, we are going to put as our final answer, 0 0.83, and we wanna make sure that that bar notation only goes above the three. Do not put it over the eight because then you're, then you're saying that the eight and the three keep repeating over and over and over again, which isn't true, it's just the three. Okay, so that is it for the third one. For the fourth one, we have 3 25ths. So let's go ahead and divide these once again. So three is our dividend. 25 is the divisor. How many times does three go into 25? Well, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and extend this three out to say 3.0. 25 goes into three again, zero times. Bring your decimal point up into your quotient. 25 goes into 30 once. 25 times one is 25. And then we'll subtract here. We get a remainder of five. 25 doesn't go into five. So we annex a zero and bring it down. How many times does 25 go into 50? Two times exactly. So 25 times two is 50, and you end up with a remainder of zero. So final answer in this case is a terminating decimal, and we get 12 hundredths for our answer. So I'm just gonna put a T there for terminating. If you already jotted it down for number one, it's doesn't, you know, the spelling doesn't change, so just fine to put a T there. Okay, and then finally, very last one before you try some out on your own. You're gonna notice this one is a little bit different because you might see this from time to time. This is an improper fraction, right? I also want you to note that this could have also been a mixed number. So 13 fourths, if you had it as a mixed number, really is three and one fourth. And if you're trying to convert three and one fourth to a improper fraction to then turn it to a decimal, to do that in case you aren't aware, you take your denominator, which is four, multiply it by the number out front, so four times three is 12, and then you're going to add your numerator, which is gonna be 13, which is how they end up getting 13 fourths as an improper fraction. So just kind of a note to yourself in case they give you a mixed number, convert it to improper, and then convert it to a decimal from there. Right, now let's go ahead and divide once again. 13 is our dividend this time around, and we have four, as our divisor. Well, how many times does four go into 13? You're gonna notice that four can actually go into 13 this time. So four goes into 13 three times. So four times three is 12. We're going to subtract, and then we're going to get a remainder of one. Well, four doesn't fit into one, so let's go ahead and annex a zero, but we wanna make sure that we still put that decimal point there and then bring a zero down, right? So decimal point goes up into our quotient. How many times does four go into 10? Well, it goes in twice. Four times two is eight. You get a remainder of two. Four does not go into two at all, so we annex zero, bring that down, and then four goes into 25 times perfectly. So four times five is 20. 20 minus 20 is gonna give us a remainder of zero, and our final answer is going to be three and 25 hundredths. Now notice, our improper fraction actually had a number out front of the decimal point other than zero because this fraction is larger 
than one, right? It was three and one fourth as a mixed number and all the other fractions are less than one, which is why there's a zero out front of all of them, right? With that being said, let's go ahead and give you five problems to try out on your own. Now it is time for the practice session. I want you to pause the video, try out all five of these problems on your own. I want you to convert all five of these fractions with one of them being an improper fraction all to decimals. And then when you think you are good to go and maybe have scored a five for five, come back and play the video and see how you did. So I'm assuming at this point you have tried out all five practice problems and now we're gonna run through the answers. So the first one, you should have got a terminating decimal of 0 0.2 or 2 tenths. So this should have been a terminating where it stops after the two. There's no additional numbers after that. For number two, this should have been a repeating decimal and you would have got 0 0.8 repeating and that H just repeating forever and ever and ever. So I'm just going to write an R there for repeating. And then for seven eighths, this should have been another terminating decimal. This would have been 0 0.875 or 875 thousandths. And it stops after the five making this terminating. And then for number four, two fifteenths, you end up getting a repeating decimal of zero 0.13, but there's only a bar notation above the three because the three is repeating, but not the one. So don't put the bar notation over both. And then finally, the last one being a improper fraction. Now, remember, if this was a mixed number, this would have been one and three sixteenths because when you convert it back, well, 16 times one is 16 and then add three and you end up getting 19 sixteenths. For your final answer for this one, you should have gotten 1.1875 for your final answer. Now, if you went five for five, very, very nice job on being able to convert fractions to decimals. Let me know if you got a perfect score in the comments. And then if this video helped you out, leave a like, letting me know that I did a good job. Again, leave a comment on anything else you want me to cover topic-wise. And of course, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and we'll see you with more mathematics in the next video.